Hey everyone, this is Joe Gamble back again, and today we're going to discuss and alleviate the causes of what we would label a mystery squeal number two, electric boogaloo. Okay, maybe not, but before we dive headfirst into the topic and uh, to bring you up to speed, in the last video we were discussing the causes of mystery squeal number one. And uh, it's just this attempt to uh, start to answer some of the commonly asked questions that we get through customer support. And uh, just so you know, this is the number one commonly asked question that we get aside from uh, what impedance should we run this thing at and uh, how, how long till these things are back in stock. So I think it's plenty important. Uh, so, uh, mystery squeal number one is caused by uh, having your guitar, or more accurately, your guitar's pickups in close proximity to the output transformer of your guitar amplifier. Uh, whereas what we're talking about today, uh, the secondary pr primary, secondary primary, that's probably not a thing. The secondary cause of uh, errant noise and squeals in your guitar rig, um, we are labeling as uh, ground loop noise. So let's talk about ground loops for a second. Uh, what's a ground loop? Um, a ground loop is an issue that crops up when you have uh, devices or an audio ecosystem uh, that sees more than one path to ground. Okay, so if you have two or more pieces of gear that are connected to a common ground via different paths, uh, you wind up with a situation where both pieces of gear are kind of jockeying and competing to determine which one is going to be ground. Now, how does this electronic phenomena wind up um, showing up in audible form, right? Um, well, in a guitar rig, we're using unbalanced connections and unbalanced cabling also uses the ground for audio information. So when this junk is cycling around and we have ground loop stuff occurring, um, the ground conductor is not only serving as ground, but it's also carrying this hum and noise garbage um, that's caused by a power flowing through the ground. So that's how we wind up hearing it. So this loop manifests um, in audible form. Uh, there's like a low frequency hum sometimes, like a 60 cycle hum. <laughs> uh, and it also um, shows up sometimes as like a high pitched squeal when you connect your effects pedals to your rig, um, and we'll discuss that more in a moment. So the most infamous example of a ground loop generating um, situation in the guitar world would be running a stereo amp rig or, or a multi-amp rig where you have two amplifiers um, that are connected to the same non-isolated power source, and that's trying to connect to earth via the same manner. Uh, because then you have these two amplifiers that uh, would be grounded in and of themselves but because now that they're chained together in this sort of system, you know, they're in this uh, oral boxing match, you know, where they're trying to figure out which one is going to be ground and it's really obnoxious because we have to hear that fight um, manifest through uh, all this hum and noise junk. Okay, so now we're going to turn our attention to the power station and uh, this issue that's been reported to us that some users encounter when they're employing uh, what we call the four cable method. And uh, if you don't know what that is, we'll explain it to you here. All right, so the first cable is going to run from your guitar to, say, a gain pedal or distortion pedal or pedals. Okay, the second cable is going to run from your gain pedals to the input jack of the amp. The third cable is going to run from the effects send out in your loop to, let's say, you know, delay or reverb pedal. And then the fourth cable is going to leave the delay reverb pedal and uh, connect back to the effects return of your amp. Now in this scenario, we can probably get away with minimal ground loop noise if we just use an isolated power supply on our pedal board like I am here. But um, of course, we still have the preconditions for a ground loop because with the design of the amplifier, we have one ground path running from the input jack, the entire circuitry of the amplifier to the speaker output. So that's one ground path. But keep in mind, we're also running a gain pedal into the front end of the amp and running a delay pedal in the effects loop of the power station. And even though both of those pedals are grounded in the same power supply, that's still two ground paths. And if we've learned anything so far, it's that two ground paths can equal a ground loop and perhaps even some oscillation. So that is why we spend all this money on these expensive uh, isolated power supplies so we can break ground loops and uh, keep everything nice and tidy and isolated. Okay, so let's look more specifically at um, what happens when we're using the four cable method with the effects loop of the power station. Uh, and so the first thing that we need to do is visualize that the power station is actually joining the chain after the speaker output of the amplifier, okay? So that means that the effects loop of the power station isn't going to be within the linear ground path of the amplifier itself. Um, and then the other thing to keep in mind is that 
because the power station is joining the dance after the speaker output, that's where all the high current is, okay? Because that's what's driving the reactive load. And uh, it's perfectly natural that it's gonna bleed signal back up to the front end of the amp where we have a gain pedal sitting there, right? So that's what's gonna cause, you know, all this kind of high pitch squealing and stuff. And uh, it's worth mentioning, because we talked about it in the last video, that um, anytime you use higher gain in your rig, you're gonna make it a lot more susceptible to these sorts of um, unfortunate and unruly utterances. All right, so another thing about ground loop noise is uh, you can think you're doing everything right. You know, you can be running your isolated power supply, you can be using high quality cables, and still wind up with a situation where maybe you have two pedals that are too close together, and uh, you know, you wind up with um, the cables from each pedal like touching, or um, you know, you're running a Y cable out of one pedal and splitting it into, another, into two others. And uh, you know you get this situation where you have the ground of the pedal in front of the amp touching the ground of the pedal in the effects loop, and you'll wind up with some pretty wild sounds like this. Okay, so now I'm down here on the floor with a slightly different rig, okay? Uh, we're using a Mesa Mark IV because I wanted to demonstrate what happens when you use a gainier amplifier than what I was using previously. Because that tends to be where this issue crops up more often. So uh, let's describe the rig. Okay, so we're going the guitar. Okay, into the Tube Screamer, and then the Tube Screamer, we're going into the front end of the Mark IV, okay? Then around back here, we're coming out of the effects send of the power station, okay? Into the slate input, and then out of the slate's output, we're coming back around to the effects return of the power station. Okay, so we're purposefully inducing this, okay? So it's not going to hurt your gear or ruin anything. It's just gonna be obnoxious, obviously. Uh, but we need to be armed with the knowledge of what to do when this happens so we can eliminate it, right? So what we're gonna demonstrate here is what happens when the ground of the pedal in front of the amp touches the ground of the pedal in the effects loop, okay? And it sounds like this. Just like we said it would. All right, so before we go any further with solutions, I wanna make the point that uh, not every piece of gear that you use is gonna produce the same exact frequency or uh, high pitch squeal oscillation sound. Um, so what I did here was I swapped out the slate for uh, a Boss DD500 and uh, it gives us this sound here. And so the type of squeal and oscillation that you're getting is gonna vary uh, depending on the individual gear that you're running on your pedal board or, or in your rig. Okay, so how do we go about solving these things? Okay, so for regular 60 cycle hum, you know, that kind of ground loop hum, uh, we can sometimes get rid of it by simply lifting the ground switch on the back of the power station. Uh, another thing that we're gonna wanna do is run all of our pedals off of a isolated power supply like we're doing in this example. But for um, this really sort of high pitched squealing oscillation noise that we're getting uh, in these high gain rigs, um, that's not really gonna cut it. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna uh, insert um, what's called an isolation transformer into the chain. And uh, that's gonna go between the gain pedal in the input jack of the amp and that is what is going to break the ground loop once and for all. Okay so here's an isolation transformer box. This one's by Pyle. It's called a hum destroyer. Um, Behringer makes a version. I heard Jensen does. Maybe Radial. Um, they're out there and they're all reasonably priced. Okay so let's listen one more time to our glorious oscillation sound. Sounds like this. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to plug uh, our gain pedal into the isolation transformer, into the front input jack of the amplifier, same test, and voila, different result, fixed. So I know that's an awful lot of talking to arrive at such a simple fix, but uh, we figured it would be more helpful to give you an idea what was actually happening here uh, when you encountered this stuff so um, it wasn't such a mystery anymore. And so a final word, we can anticipate that some people might wonder uh, why the power station wasn't designed with something like this in line uh, from the jump. And the answer would be that uh, we can't practically uh, implement every possible solution for every possible situation in the box. 
um, especially when we can see that uh, the power station itself isn't what's causing the issue. So we figured we'd offer you a uh, cheap and easy fix um, that focuses directly on the problem at hand. And uh, it's probably an issue that many of the users of the power station won't even encounter at all. So there you have it. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope it was really helpful. Uh, if you liked it, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell if you want to see more stuff like this. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. See ya.